This factory has made hats the same way for 166 years. It takes at least two months to turn raw rabbit fur into a high-end hat, which is why each one can cost up to $2,500. In fact, Borsellino made the fedora world famous. Today, just 90 employees make 70,000 hats per year. Now that might seem like a lot, but it's a small fraction of the two million hats the factory used to crank out back in the 1920s, when almost every man wore a hat outside. Nowadays, it seems like the only people still wearing the hats are Johnny Depp and Hasidic Jews. Nearly every man in the tight-knit Lubavitch community wears a fedora, and many splurge on a Borsalino. The market is definitely growing. So what made the fedora so iconic? Why do thousands of religious Jews wear it? And how do the companies that make these hats plan to bring them back in style, while still making them the old-fashioned way? At the Borsellino factory in Alessandria, Italy, everything starts with scraps of rabbit fur. Most modern hat makers skip this step, opting to purchase pre-made felt. Some say it's the custom-made rabbit fur felt that makes a true Borsellino. E il primo passaggio è quello di creare la ricetta che storicamente si tramanda di generazione in generazione per creare il feltro di qualità superiore. Some of the felting machines have been around since the late 1800s. Every hat goes through at least 52 steps to meet Borsellino's high standards. And it's checked for quality at every turn. Contrariamente a quanto si può pensare, non è l'assemblaggio di più parti unite tra loro, ma nasce tutto da un unico cono in feltro. These wooden machines rain down the treated fur onto a perforated metallic cone. It spins so quickly that the fur perfectly lines up to the surface. A jet of boiling water keeps the felt fixed throughout the process. The company's co-founder, Giuseppe Borsellino, learned this craft in France before moving back to Italy to start his own business in 1857. He refined the process they still use today. The hair from the rabbit is treated, felted into a cone, then washed and pressed multiple times until it shrinks down to the shape of a hat. In its heyday, Borsellino employed 6,000 people. About half of them were women. The female workers were mostly involved in the finishing stages, especially checking for quality. The hat's popularity soon spread across the world. From the late 1800s to the 1920s, most men headed to work wearing a hat. And the factory made fedoras for iconic Hollywood movies, like Casablanca. But hat wearing eventually grew out of fashion, especially after World War II. One reason behind that? Hats used to remind men of their time in uniform. The popularity of hats may have changed over time, but Borsellino tries to make a product of timeless quality. We built and we manufacture the hat with the same process, with the same machine, with all the passage. Once the raw shape for the hat is created, it's still very fragile. A worker carefully peels it off the cone. Then the fabric heads to a smaller roller and cast iron. These machines help lock the fibers together. Then the fabric goes through the first of three quality inspections. In a dark room, an artisan checks that the surface of the felt is uniform. But the felt pieces are still too big. These machines use boiling water to shrink them down and repeatedly stamp the felt. Una volta che abbiamo ridotto le dimensioni del cono e lo abbiamo reso più spesso, si passa al reparto delle informature. That's where it transforms from a cone to resembling an actual hat. Later on, the stiffening machine's large claw breaks down the weave of the felt. It creates the division between the crown and the brim. Then it's time for Scotty steam shaping, a process named after the Borsellino craftsman who invented it. The felt capoline is placed in a machine that uses pressure and steam to press it down with an aluminum block. Now there's a well-defined crown in the hat. Dunque, smettiamo di chiamarlo cono e iniziamo a chiamarlo cappello. Workers remove any excess hair fibers and the hat heads to the finishing station. Giovanni Zamiri has worked here since 1989. He helps create the shape of the hat's brim. Questa lavorazione viene effettuata con un macchinario a caldo umido dove andiamo a creare una particolare curvatura e andiamo a creare appunto la formazione dell'ala del cappello. Giovanni says everything requires close attention. Back in the 1920s, workers watched over the dyeing of the felts. They used sticks to keep them submerged, but today machines dye the felts with steam pressure and boiling water. 
They soak here for at least 90 minutes. The hats are just now beginning to take on the classic fedora shape. Lo chiamo finissaggio di rifinitura del cappello, che è unico al mondo. The accessories department sews in the lining, internal leather belt, and external cotton band. And the final flourish that's also stood the test of time, the Borsalino logo, stamped in 24 karat gold leaf. It takes nearly two months to make a hat through this painstaking process, all using the same machinery and methods the company first became famous for. Borsalino was built on handcrafted fedoras. Today, the company is branching out into all kinds of luxury accessories. But for some, wearing a hat isn't a fashion statement. It's a matter of faith. Hasidic Jews wear a variety of headwear. How you cover your head can tell others which specific community you're a member of. Some fur hats, known as stramos, can sell for thousands of dollars. The Chabad Lubavitch community adopted the fedora after World War II. That's when Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, known as the Rebbe, fled Europe for Crown Heights, Brooklyn. After he assumed leadership of the Chabad movement in 1951, he continued wearing the layman's hat. The Rebbe is wearing this kind of hat, and it's a cool hat. It's not exactly a strimal, then it's a no-brainer. Reuven Kamenetsky operates Borsalino boutiques in Jewish neighborhoods. He we'll thinks we'll it's too the, small, and we'll I think it looks good. We'll let the crowd decide. Basically, basically, good. the smaller the brim, <laughs> the nice, the more in style it is, but he's a little nervous to, to wear such, like, such an in-style hat, basically. Returning customers can give their hats a tune-up. This area, with all these funky tools, are basically, this is basically where we take care of both new and old hats. And so we're reshaping it and making it look like brand new. Demand in Jewish areas is so high that it's created an opportunity for other hat makers to enter the market. We start wearing hats at 13 at our bar mitzvah, so we kind of knew what it's supposed to feel like, what a good quality hat's supposed to feel like. Brooklyn brothers Levy and Yossi Chayo co-founded Bellissimo, which competes with Borsalino for this religious market. So we knew what people wanted, um, being that we were the consumer as well. They started their hat business back in 2017, after Levy went shopping. The prices went up and I'm like, you know, I think we can make a better hat. The brothers started making hats by hand. We put together $1,000, we got a hold of 10 sample hats, and we popped up a tent on the street and we said we're going we're gonna to start with 10 hats and try to just show it to people, not even give it to them. Everything works with steam. Steam can do anything. This one actually looks pretty good. I'm not going to mess with it. Now they manufacture at a factory in Montreal. Right now she's smoothening out the sweatband and making sure it looks perfect. But just like Borsalino, this company is also relying on equipment that's over 100 years old. So the equipment we're using is so old because they don't make that equipment anymore. The companies that used to make those equipment closed down, but you can't buy this stuff new even if you wanted to. The machinery at Bellissimo might be antiquated, but the company's not shy about using one modern tool, social media. The company has extended its reach through celebrity endorsements from Jeremy Piven, Snoop Dogg, Cedric the Entertainer, and... Someone bought Jamie Foxx's hat, and we were told recently that, you know, he got it over five years ago, and he keeps it in a special place and says his favorite hats from the two Hasidic guys in Brooklyn. But we got the Bellissimo hats, look at that. Ah! Gangster. I asked him if he minded giving us a shout out. He happily did that for us, which, which really helped get us on the map. That brought a lot of new customers. Bellissimo surpassed its goal of $1.5 million in sales last year. A lot of people find the brand through Instagram and buy their hats through their website, where they can customize their own funky fedoras. But for their own community, the brothers' approach remains face to face. Every day you gotta figure out a new way to reach your customers and Thank God we're going with the old-fashioned way where it's word of mouth. A lot of customers were skeptical. They only trusted one famous brand, so they didn't really want to give us a try and like, oh, let me buy this you know, $200 hat from you guys who I never heard of. So the brothers ran a promotion at a gigantic conference for rabbis. We had the biggest line at this convention, and all the other businesses were like, what is going on at that line? They couldn't even see what, was it, what were we selling. We're doing like you know, $100 off the hat, so people just started grabbing the hats and trying them on, barely looking in a little handheld mirror. While Bellissimo is trying to grow, Borsalino is recovering from financial struggles. 
Back in 2017, the brand almost went under, but it was bought out by a group of investors the next year. And the company has shifted strategy to attract fashion-forward buyers with more than just fedoras. We are working to make that our brand become much more contemporary, much more fresh. Managing Director Mauro Baglietto says the company's toughest challenge is attracting younger buyers. We are really working to make that the brand much more younger. Uh, because we, we really believe that uh, the new generation are the future of, uh, of the customer. A new team of fashion experts joined the company, including the former CEO of Gucci, Giacomo Santucci. The company aims to sell more hats in the U.S. and Asia. And it says the number of women buying their hats has doubled in the past 10 years. Even with plans to expand, Borsellino won't compromise on tradition. And we want uh, that uh, our uh, customer uh, always find uh, luxury product, but for us luxury means uh, quality. And competition for the Jewish market hasn't slowed things down. It's, it's an incredible thing that you see newer brands. I think it's, it's a positive uh, sign. It, it shows that the market is dynamic and it's growing. We don't see any reduction in sales. We see growth. For Bellissimo, some of its best customers are family. Dozens of members of the Chayo clan gathered in Montreal for a traditional haircutting ceremony for Levy's son. Today, with my uh, grandson, I think he is doing a very good job and he's creating a whole new fashion in hats, not only because it's a uh, custom for us to wear it, but it's becoming a fashionable item. So why not combine style with grace? So we cover our heads so Bellissimo can sell more hats. <laughs> no. We cover our head because it's a recognition that there's always a, a being above us. God is above us.